Okay, we're back. So I added some more sprites. Mm, we can go through and you can see what I did. Some Monty Moles, Pitch and Chuck, Bullet Bills, a Charge and Chuck, some Super Koopas, uh, etc. So again, I made sure everything I selected was from the proper tile set. Again, uh, SP4 equals 09. These uh, Jumping Piranha Plants are standard sprites, so those are easy. Now, uh, some of the other stuff I added... Oh, this is a good time to mention. So I, I mentioned about the Bullet Bill Shooters. So this bullet machine here is an object. See, now I can select it in object mode. And it does not shoot anything by itself. What I had to do is, under Special Commands and Generators, I selected Bullet Bill Shooter, and that's this guy right here. And I inserted that, and I placed it right there. So that's what's actually shooting bullet bills. Um, other objects that I put in, there was some coin. There were some coin blocks. Uh, this right here, it's a turn block with a silver or blue POW inside. POW is a P switch, depending on its X position. Again, it's one of those X divided by two things. So if I move this over, it'll say it has a silver POW. If I move it over again, it says it has a blue POW. So I put it there because it, now it has a blue POW. I added some coins, uh, particularly over here, some coins near the goal point so that there's a use for that POW. Also, uh, just a level design tip, if, if, you, if you think the player might be making a blind jump, which he may be depending on how far the screen is scrolled, I'll, I'll put some coins there just to direct the player so he'll know, oh, okay, I can jump there. Um, one other point here, there's some pipes near the end. When you insert pipes, be very careful which kind of pipe you put in, because uh, if you s you'll see here it says vertical pipe end on top, and underneath it it has the same pipe but with exit enabled. So make sure you're using the correct pipe. You don't want to have an exit enabled pipe if you don't intend for there to be an exit there, because the player will go down the pipe and bad things will happen. Same thing with doors and stuff, you know, you just make sure make sure you're using the right the right objects. We're not gonna get into exits here. That'll be later. Um but yeah. So there's a couple of things we still need to do before we can actually play the level. The first thing is we're gonna go to view uh level entrance. And you'll see down here this is the level entrance. Mario is inside the ground, which is bad, and he's gonna fall to his death. So we need to change that. If you go up in the toolbar, there's a group of five buttons here that look like doors. The second one lets you modify the main and midway entrance of the level. Now, the thing about main and midway entrances is they both have to be the exact same position on whatever screen they are on. You can see the screens here. Are, I, I've set screen boundaries so that you can view them. The only thing that's different between the main and midway entrance is the screen number. Now, I haven't actually put a midway point, so we're not going to deal too much with the midway entrance. So, let's deal with the, mo with the main entrance. We want it on screen zero, that's fine. Uh, X position, that, that'll work, but the Y position needs to change, of course. So, it's basically guess and check, just try and pick something. Let's try that. Okay, that's not it. it needs to be one higher. <clears throat> there we go. If, for some reason, uh, the values you want are not down in these drop boxes. You can click on this checkbox and select them manually yourself, so you have all that. But this will work for me. The very bottom checkbox lets you decide how Mario enters the level. Most of the time, it'll be do nothing and cannot bring an item. Um, if it's part of if it's part of another level and you enter it through a pipe or whatever, you'll use pipe exits. You know, up, down, left, and right, whatever. But we're gonna leave it as is. The other important thing here is this middle section here, layer one and two, foreground, background, initial position. Now, uh, let me just, well, okay, the explanation is this. If Mario is entering the level near the top of the level, you want to set these to the top values here, like that. If Mario is entering near the middle of the level, like in this level, now, you want to set it to the second value. If Mario is entering near the bottom of the level, like he was earlier, you would want to set these to the third value. So, we're going to leave it as the second value because he's near the middle of the end of the level. Okay? That's very important. If you don't set that properly, then what can happen is you will see some garbled, ugly garbage in the background of your level, and it looks terrible. 
I've had it happen many times. So that's uh, that's that. A couple other things we can do here. Um, if you go up to the toolbar again, there's a group of four buttons, and starting with a poison mushroom. Click on the Mario head button, and this lets you change stuff about the level. Uh, the top drop box lets you choose a level mode. You don't really have to change that here, and most of the time you don't have to change it anyway, so we're not going to deal with that. Music, you can change what music you use. You can uh, you can change the number of screens, but actually Lunar Magic by default will decide that for you. Basically what it does is it goes and finds the last object or last sprite placed, and it will count how many screens up till that point, and they'll say, okay, this level uses that many screens. So here it's using, you know, 11 screens. So we're not going to change that. Item memory index we're not going to change either. Time limit you'll see it says bypass. I'll explain that in a minute. You can choose uh, four different time limits. 0 seconds, 200 seconds, 300 seconds, 400 seconds. If you choose 0 seconds, uh, that actually means you have no time limit. So anyway, let's press OK. So what was that whole bypass thing? Well, if you go up in the toolbar again, there's another group of buttons with three buttons. The last one is a note block. Click on that. This lets you bypass the music settings if you want to, which I don't. Or you can bypass the time limit by click by checking this box here, and you can insert a custom time limit to use, such as 250 seconds, which is not one of the normal options. The other thing you can do with this is you can force the time limit. So for some reason, Mario is going to enter this level through a pipe, for example, and you don't know how much time they're going to have left. You can say, okay, I want them to have you know x number of seconds, and you can force it like that. But we're not going to do that. So that pretty much covers all the basic stuff, and now we can get to a very important stage in the process, which is testing the level. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're ready to test our level, so we're going to load the ROM in ZSNES, or whatever emulator you're using. So we didn't change anything except the content of the level. We didn't change the overworld, anything like that. So the level is right where it's supposed to be, Yoshi's Island 1. And already we can see that it's been changed, which is good. That's what we wanted. The time limit is different than it should be, or than it used to be, rather. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, those fish were not supposed to do that. Here's Pokey, and as you can see, he looks proper. There's the vine, there's the Monty Moles. So it looks like everything is in the right place, and everything works so far, except for the fish. And that's pretty much what you want to do when you test, is just see what's working and see what's not working, and, you know, see if there's anything you overlooked, both in terms of the level design and in terms of how a person would actually play the level. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover about using Lunar Magic, just basic stuff, um, how to and getting used to the interface and you know all the more advanced stuff you can look into on your own you can read up on that and you can play with I might cover some in future tutorials not sure yet um, if there's anything you want to suggest you can send me a message and I'll try to cover it if I know how to do it some stuff I don't know how to do so obviously for those I'm just gonna direct you somewhere else and uh, hopefully this has been helpful to some people who have been interest who are interested in trying this out and making levels of their own. And I hope I also helped you avoid certain common mistakes that I see in a lot of hacks. Um, pretty much everything I covered is stuff you'll see on the FAQ on Super Mario World Central .net. That's SMW Central .net. And uh, that site also has tons and tons of resources on other things you can use to edit your hacks. Uh, adding custom music, custom blocks, custom, you know, everything, bosses, whatever. Uh, as well as a forum. They have an entire forum where you can get help from people much more knowledgeable and with much more experience than I uh, for your hacks. So I suggest you check that out. Other than that, uh, this is Chainfire9001. See you later.